Hello and a warm welcome to the special live broadcast on Dumisho Greater. Uh, earlier this week, the city of Johannesburg announced its budget for 2015. The man responsible for the numbers, that's Finance MMC Jeffrey Makubo, joins me in the hot seat to unpack the ins and outs of this year's budget. And we are also joined by a studio audience. And our viewers at home do remember that you can take part in the conversation using the hashtag Ask Makubo. Uh, let's kick off our discussion. MMC, thank you very much for your time. This is the biggest budget that we have had any city have. Almost 53 billion rand. How are you going to deploy these funds? And of course, making sure that this is in line with the Joburg 2040 strategy. Uh, good afternoon to Michelle and thanks for having us here. Um, we appreciate the moment. 52.6 billion rands that we will be appropriating tomorrow in council. We tabled it in council yesterday. Will be used really to um, further the work that we've been doing. We identified 10 priorities in the city and we said the first five are for the term of office and the others are for the decade. But we're doing all 10 at the same time. Uh, so, so the budget is largely allocated to those 10 priorities. Mm. Let's talk about those 10 priorities and the rationale behind it. Uh, it seems to be a key theme. We've seen the city of Tswane uh, put a big uh, chunk of money towards electricity. The sustain sustainability cluster that you currently have uh, also <coughs> has city power within it and they are a department that's been re held responsible with a lot. So uh, with that said, just to give us a, come some color around that. Yes, we've got four clusters in the, in, the, in the city, and these clusters are based on the out, 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 outputs and outcomes of, uh, of the GDS 2040. Um, so the resource sustainability is key to us, not only electricity, but water as well. Uh, so a cluster led by my colleague, uh, MMC Mfikwe, uh, who's an who's a, a MMC for infrastructure, uh, is really leading the charge towards sustainability. Um, as you know that uh, we're short of electricity, we're short of energy, and if you don't do anything uh, around water conservation or alternative um, water management issues, we'll run out of water in no time. Mm. So we must do something today to protect the future. So what's being done currently? What are the programs in place? Well, the detail is in the business plan of City Power and Johannesburg Water. Uh, so all they did, they came to us and said, look, we need X amount of money to, to do um, load limiting, to upgrade substations, to, to upgrade um, the intake points. Uh, so, so he gave them the money to, to, to do that. So, so there are programs to, 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 to roll out uh, smart meters that the mayor announced around load limiting. So, so they've got a couple of programs that they are doing um, at City Power. Uh, and at Water, they're replacing pipes um, and, and they're finding w alternative ways of uh, water harvesting. Mm. We'll be speaking to MNC a little bit later from City Power around load limiting uh, and so forth. But uh, with regards to that, the rollout timelines, uh, because this is an urgent issue, we've all felt the discomfort of not having electricity in Johannesburg. Yes, we do say in the speech yesterday that uh, it affects children uh, while they're doing their homework. It affects uh, councillors and elder people who are trying to study late in their lives. <laughs> it affects, uh, it just disturbs lives uh, generally. So. So, so we, we, we think that it's a progressive thing. Um, I think they'll roll out uh, the smart meters quicker than we thought they would um, because it's an urgent thing, I agree with you. Mm. And let's talk about water, which is also another key uh, factor here. Infrastructure is going to be key. Uh, there was a, s a study that was done by Steve Hedden. He uh, focuses a lot on water shortages and he said 25% of municipal water is lost through leaks. So. With that said, what is uh, the city of Johannesburg doing about that? I am not sure about that statistic. Um, maybe my colleagues will, will assist. But they, there are commercial losses and there are non-commercial losses. So, so non-commercial losses would be water leaks and uh, uh, they call them technical technical losses. So, so those, we, we're deploying new pipes. Uh, that's why I said there's a pipe replacement program. Um, um, to, to renew the infrastructure. I mean, Jobek is old, so some yeah. of the infrastructure is very old. So, so we have to reinvest infrastructure that, uh, that's quite old. Um, and, and some is really capacity and deal with issues like pressure management mm. um, to reduce the, the amount of pressure that goes through the pipes. So, so we are doing something around, around, around water losses. Of course, th the non-commercial would be uh, the, the unbuilt and build portions of water that goes into household and businesses. That is a re revenue recovery program that, uh, that we're under undertaking. Mm. 
You mentioned pressure and Johannesburg is old, but on a yearly basis we are seeing uh, young students, uh, people who are looking for job opportunities coming to Johannesburg in order to try and find uh, some jobs here. Is Joburg going to be able to absorb all these new job seekers? Our stats yesterday from the statistics uh, South Africa said unemployment officially now sits at over 26%. We've got no choice. We have to find ways to, to, to enable business and the environment to, to be positive for, for job creation and, and, and all that. Um, you know, Tobik was built by migrants. It was built on the back of migrants. So, so it's, uh, we keep on attracting people every year. I mean, the statistic says we attract around 10,000 and more people every month. So it's not only young people, including yeah. the middle-aged, come to Chobek looking for opportunities. So what do we do with those people? Uh, it's not only employment, it's, it's where do they stay, how do they live? So it's people's life in totality that we have to focus on as a city of Johannesburg. Of course, for young people, there are programs like uh, Josie at Work that we piloting, you know, we're giving them opportunities through EPWP. And, and so there are various programs that we did say in the speech yesterday that we'll be focusing on creating a dedicated youth directorate in the city just to focus on youth development. How long have they been in operational in operation for? Are they working? Uh, because it seems there's such a frustration that we're not seeing enough job creation. And the outlook from a lot of the analysts we are, we are seeing is that the quality of job and job creation is looking very, very dim. We started the Joseph Work program last year and we think that will ramp up, uh, but it can't absorb every single person who's unemployed. Um, it will just be a contribution to the unemployment program. I think my colleague in economic development would, would share uh, what, what we're thinking about, the, the sorts of things that we're doing to spare economic growth and to invest in the economy. Um, but if you look at our CAPEX program, uh, it's a spend in the economy. I mean, when we started, we're saying we'll be spending in a counter-cyclical manner. When everyone is pulling back, we spend, we pumping money into the economy. Uh, we believe that there'll be a multiplier effect and it will affect, it will help the economy grow. Now, with a growing economy, uh, we must have make a dent on unemployment. I don't think there's any economic theory that can solve unemployment without economic growth. Mm. So we have to grow the economy, we've got no choice. Mm. Uh, speaking about economic growth, uh, before we head on to a commercial break in just a moment, the vision for the city of Johannesburg is to be an example of a world-class city and to also make sure that tomorrow is definitely going to be better than today. Uh, with that said, this is also justifying the tariff reviews that we have seen. A lot of people have been up in arms about this. Uh, MMC, have you considered the wide spectrum of households that will be impacted by this? Considering all the pressures, you've got inflation, you've got low GDP, and uh, now also we've got a very high unemployment. We do say in our speech that uh, the macroeconomic environment is not encouraging. Um, even at the micro level, at the household level, we know that there's pressure on the disposable income of uh, households. Um, but there are choices and trade-offs that we have to make. The, the increases for electricity and water, uh, we, we absorb those. These are pass-through costs. ESCOM gives, gives us about 13% plus, 13 plus increase. We're only increasing in real terms by 12.19% with electricity. Uh, rent water is charging us 13.5% um, uh, bulk increase. We're passing through 14% uh, because uh, we needed 5% for retail and to absorb overheads, you know, it's not only bulk that goes up, including salaries and all that, they go up by 5%, but what we've, what we've given Tobe quota is 0.5% to, to absorb uh, from their overheads. So, so, so we, those we have to pass through, because if we don't, then it means that we have to take money from somewhere, either from reserves or, 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 or from rates account to, to absorb the increases from, from, from rent water, from the wholesalers. But if we do that, it means that the trade-off is that we must pull back on the capital expenditure. And if you pull back on the capital expenditure, if roads deteriorate in two years, mm. uh, then in two years people will say, but the city has not invested in roads. Meanwhile, you actually pulled back and transferred money from investment to consumption. So we thought that let's, let's bite the, the, the bullet now. Let's just pass through the cost with the understanding that co household and consumers are struggling. But the call we made yesterday is that can you please work with us and reduce your own consumption, manage your own consumption. So we'll introduce time of use so that, um, you know, there are certain periods that uh, electricity is high, especially at peak. And of course, you use what we call the IBT, the step tariff. So the more you use, the more you pay. So the less you use, 
the less you pay. So, so the rate gets higher, uh, the, more, the, the, more, the more you consume electricity. And water will be the same. Is there an education program currently underway to educate the public on this? Because if you are looking at these figures, you're seeing tariff increases. Uh, but for individuals to understand what it is that the city of Johannesburg is trying to do, what are you doing to inform them? Again, we say in the speech there that uh, uh, there's information that's available on, from City Power, from Johannesburg Water, and from ESCOM on how to reduce consumption, the sorts of things you have to do. And we further say the city will work with consumers. If you come into us and say, look, I, I can't afford uh, electricity. What can, I, what can I do to reduce? Should I move to prepaid to, in order to manage my own consumption? So, so there are mechanisms that you can help consumers with to manage their own, uh, their own uh, usage of electricity mm. and water. Of course, so uh, with managing such a big budget and managing expectations of citizens that live in the city, uh, the issue of management of these funds and making sure that they get deployed where they're supposed to go, accountability, transparency, and making sure that there is no uh, corruption that takes place. How do you respond uh, to these uh, allegations that sometimes may come across that the city of Johannesburg is not managing their funds correctly? I, we do. Um, I mean, we every single department uh, that, that's got a vote where we have appropriated money has got a director or directorate of finance. We are group finance, so we oversee the, the entire city, including the entities. Um, if there's any whiff of corruption, I mean, we've got an anti-corruption hotline. It's managed by, by um, an external auditing firm. Uh, we normally say external auditing firm. We don't say which one, uh, even though we do know which one it is. Um, so, so people can, can, can report. In fact, through tip-offs from the hotline, we've made a number of arrests, including in our area in revenue, uh, in city power, and, and throughout the city, where people have tipped us off on incidences of not only corruption, but fraud as well. So, mm. so I think it is working, and we, we, we got no tolerance for, for fraud and corruption at all. MMC, on that note, we're just going to head on to a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we'll have more budgetary insights with MMC Jeffrey Makubo and also our live studio audience where we do have a number of MMCs with us. Stay tuned to CNBC Africa. We're first in business worldwide. Welcome back. This is the special live broadcast where we are unpacking the city of Johannesburg's budget for 2015. I am still joined by finance MMC Jeffrey Makubo. And of course, I do have our live audience with us. And among them, I do have some of the MMCs from the different departments. Um, MMC, when we spoke earlier, there were a couple of issues there. And then you said it would be great for some of the MMCs in the various departments to comment on. So I'm going to start with the MMC from Economic Development. Uh, given the fact that we did just have our uh, GDP numbers coming in yesterday, 1.3% is where we're sitting. Unemployment uh, definitely very high, sitting at 11-year highs. Uh, you as a department, what is your mandate and what are we doing about it? No, thank you very much. Uh, of course, the, the figures that were released yesterday, uh, slightly on a depressing side, uh, that's why we from the city of Johannesburg at are taking strides really to address that. Or oh, in as far as uh, uh, creating opportunities for employment, there's a program that we have on SMMEs. Just focusing on those, uh, throughout the city we'll actually be uh, rolling out the SMME hubs, where in these hubs we do a whole lot of uh, work from mentoring, training, uh, identifying areas for, for opportunities, but more also, uh, channeling people towards uh, funding, number of funding agencies from, from government uh, where people need to be uh, channeled. You know, we had a meeting with National Tre Treasury uh, two weeks ago, where National Treasury are taking out over 160 funding, op uh, funding that's there from National. Mm -hmm. And people don't know this. And it is through in these hubs that would actually be taking people on a number of these opportunities. But not only that, uh, Josie at Work is now maturing. Through Josie at Work, number of opportunities for SMMEs uh, that will be rolling out throughout uh, Johannesburg. And this is huge, huge opportunities for people of Josie. Side by side with this, the mayor made the announcement in the, so uh, the State of the City address uh, on 200,000 young people giving opportunities around 
opportunities for training, opportunities for work. We've partnered with the with the with the private sector on this on this uh, on this uh, on this program, and we think it's going to yield very good results. And that's really responding to issues that were announced yesterday. So we're quite excited uh, with lots of investment on on economic infra infrastructure that we will be rolling out mm. uh, in, the, in the city. Mm. MC, I'd just like to throw forward to the MC of transport uh, when it comes to the infrastructure there. Uh, we are looking at a paradigm shift. Uh, Joburg, uh, we're seeing an influx, we're seeing a lot of traffic. How are we dealing with this? As MMC Makubo mentioned earlier, Johannesburg is an old city. So with that said, just give us some color around what this particular department is doing uh, that we can see uh, you know a, a infrastructure that is uh, enabling economic growth yeah my responsibility is to support the development planning department that does the spatial uh, development for the city as you know that uh, we're always talking about the city being apartheid uh, legacy so we need to change the paradigm uh, around uh, how do we bring people closer to the economic hubs, uh, especially the most disadvantaged that are sitting on the periphery of the city? So the development planning is the policy leader on the corridors of freedom. And uh, transport department must make sure that we are the backbone of the economy. We work with the economic development department. So with our Via rollout, uh, we are very, very fortunate to have completed phase 1A phase 1B, which comes from Soweto right through to past all the universities as well as the hospitals, uh, heritage places, uh, media houses, going into the, into the city, right into um, Yeovil as well, because we've got feeder schemes. We're now busy with the biggest, biggest rollout of BRT, and that is the Louis Boota corridor going from Parktown right down into the inner city, going through to Alexander, into Santon. And if you go there right now, uh, you will see that the infrastructure is actually started at the end of last year. We're spending close to 2.6 billion uh, in this current year, and next year I've been, been given a budget of 2.6 billion. So my budget for transport department is 3.5 uh, billion capital and 1.5 billion for operation. And then I'm also responsible for transport, uh, making sure mobility and congestion is sorted out. So I've got uh, uh, money for um, Johannesburg Roads Agency for the, the development and reconstruction and rehabilitation of all our road networks. Yeah. We've got over 13,000 kilometers of road networks, close to 2,200 intersections with traffic lights, etc. Yeah. So we're quite happy. I think the surprise for me from the MMC uh, finance was that he gave me 612 million for my uh, operating budget for Metrobus. We're recapitalizing <laughs> and we're restructuring Metrobus. So our first so a lot of buses will go on, on the road uh, at uh, around October. We've, we're busy producing and manufacturing over 50 new buses, dual fuel buses, and we're supporting climate change and the blue and the green economy. Yeah. Thank you, MMC. I'd just like to open up some uh, more questions to the audience. Uh, before I go to the MMC of City Power, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people would like to know about, any uh, suggestions, any comments, any questions? I'll take them two at a time. Yes, sir. Please stand and tell us uh, your name and where you're from. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Reverend Thomas Rene Kitutu. I'm the chairperson of the Johannesburg Migration Advisory Panel of the city of Johannesburg for seven years now. And I'm Congolese. I live here for 20 years in South Africa, which means that uh, South Africa become my country, most than the Democratic Republic of Congo. MMC, I'm very happy to hear when you start with your speech. I think that uh, the first paragraph was uh, on migrant. And myself, I'm migrant, as I said. And uh, as you said, that, uh, collectively, collectively, we must ensure that what we saw in the recent attack on foreign national must never happen again in this leading cosmopolitan city in Africa. We are all Africans. But when I scrutinized the budget, I could not find where 
you will spend money. You will spend the money for migration. Because if you want to stop xenophobia, you want to stop that it will never happen again, money must be allocated. Yeah. How we can deal with public education over the culture yeah. of peace, reconciliation, and so on. Yes, yeah, so but I'm going uh, to yeah, stop thank you, you there because I want to give the MC an opportunity to respond. MC? Um, the, the issue of migration is, uh, uh, is dealt with under uh, the Health and Social Development uh, Department. Uh, and, and the MMC who would know the detail. I mean, the budget, as I was saying yesterday, can't include everything. So, so if there are any issues of migration and what we're doing there and how much is allocated to, to deal with the issues that have afflicted uh, Johannesburg in the past few weeks, the MMC will be, will be uh, the one to, to give at least slight more detail. The MMC will really there. Yeah. Uh, because there, there is detail in every budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. MC, would you like to pick that up? Give us uh, more detail around that. Yes. One, two. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and also thank you to Pastor Kitutu for the question. The budget that we've been allocated under social development because um, the issue of migration is under social development. Uh, the 182 million operating budget that has been allocated to social development, part of it will go to enhancing the migration systems that we have in the city. We have established uh, migration desks. W we were the first city uh, in the country and also outside the country, there are very few cities that have a migration desk. So we have established it. What we are doing now, we are enhancing the work we are doing uh, within those areas. In all our seven regions, we, we have entry points where we receive new migrants, where we also assist migrants with their issues. We have also established um, Johannesburg Migration Advisory Panel, where Pastor Kitutu is the chairperson of that. And we have a council, the Migration Advisory Council that sits, where we get advices from the migrants themselves. And the council includes migrants themselves. So part of the 182 million that has been allocated to us uh, yesterday by by MMC Makubu is to make sure that we take the migration desk from where it is to the higher level. So Pastor Kitutu, rest assured, it is catered for. It's part of the whole budget of 182. So we are going to unpack as to say from the 182 million, how much is it that we are going to spend on migration, but it's part of our program. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to have to close comments from uh, the audience unless you have a very quick one because I'd like to get a closing comment from uh, MC Makubo. Okay, thanks very much. Maybe just to add, uh, part, we are part of the same cluster with MMC Mlwelwe, a human and social development cluster. Community development is also a department that is tasked with the responsibility of advancing and promoting social cohesion in the city. Issues of integration, issues of inclusivity, issues of promotion of tolerance around dialogues in different spaces the assets we have in the city, different facilities, your exhibitions that are taking place in our libraries, in our, in our, in our museums, in our galleries, all sits well within the department as part of a contribution towards ensuring that we address issues of uh, uh, social cohesion. But also over and above uh, this kind of discussion, sport and recreation, arts, culture and heritage are some of the directorates who are responsible for in the city through this uh, Ubuntu Cup, Amosondo Cup initiatives that are promoting Ubuntu and the values of Ubuntu, I different sporting programs. MMC, thank you so much. Lovely initiatives that we see there. MMC, we only have a couple of seconds left, but I would really like to get your closing comments, uh, what we can look forward to with regards to uh, programs and targets for the city of Johannesburg. Well, well, my closing comment would be first a call to the citizens and the residents of Johannesburg uh, to work with us in in making Swanspeck a great city. Uh, part of the contribution would be to pay for, th to pay for their accounts on time um, so that uh, the city can have liquidity uh, to carry out these programs because largely we, re we rely on our own funds um, to, 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 to fund infrastructure and to fund activities of the city. So, so that's, that's really my, my closing comment. Uh, uh, we, we are confident that with my colleagues who will be able to spend this money and spend it uh, to the benefit of the future generations of the city as envisaged in the Jobek 2014.
Lucy, thank you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of the special live broadcast. A very big thank you to my guest, Finance MMC at the city of Johannesburg, Jeffrey Makubo. And of course, a very big thank you to our studio audience as well. Until next time, from myself and the team, it's goodbye. <laughs>